Hey everyone, this is uh, Kerry here with Matt Derlin on the podcast, The Way. Uh, currently reading the book, uh, Make Your Bed by Admiral McRaven, who, who was a Navy SEAL for over, I think, two decades and led Navy SEALs. And we're jumping into chapter seven here in uh, Stand Up the Bullies. And um, it's probably a topic for a lot of people in, in today's world, right? You, you see it everywhere. But um, how you doing, Matt? Good, good. Yeah, I mean this this is an exciting chapter. This is some fun stuff to talk about. Um but you know what's been kind of fun, you know, a couple of weeks ago in the last couple of weeks um getting comments from people talking about this. Like um I think I think it's interesting to hear people's people's takes on on this. I think it's it's exciting that people are are tuning in and listening to this and I think there's a lot of applicable things that can be, you know, brought to the table whatever whatever you're doing in life. So it, it's fun that to see that it's resonating with some people, but um, bullies. Yeah. That's uh, we could talk a lot about this, I think. Right. Right. This could, this, this can kind of probably go off topic and go uh, And it probably is an off topic in a sense, like, um, you know, there, there's obviously some, some wrestling related things in this chapter. And, and obviously, um, you know, part of winning a match is being a bully. You know, you like there, there, there's situations where you, 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 you just kind of bully a guy and, and win the, the scenario for, um, but us as parents. And I think anybody, most people that listen to this are, are listening to it as parents, but look, here's, here's my take. Like if you want to get stronger, um, you know, you want to get stronger, you go and lift weights, right. And you, and, and you can make your chest stronger and you can make your legs stronger. And the only way you get stronger is if you're squatting is to put more weight on the rack at some point. Um, the only way you get more explosive is to power clean and you, you set a number and you hit that number and over time that number becomes easy and when the number becomes easy then you have to put more weight on and when you put more weight on you become sore again and it hurts again and it's harder than it was and then at some point that number starts to become easy again and it's it, and it's the same principle when we've talked about this is being uncomfortable the only way to get comfortable is to make yourself uncomfortable. So you have to wrestle in areas that are uncomfortable for, for you. If I'm not good at something, then that's where at the beginning of practice, I have to put some extra time in. After practice, I got to put some extra time in. And in the middle of practice, in practice, when it's live or drilling, I need to go to the place that I'm not that good and I'm going to be uncomfortable doing it. And the more I do it, the more comfortable I get. And then I have to go and explore the next area that I'm not good in. That makes me uncomfortable. In reality, it's like it's like a bully. And look, there isn't one parent in the world that is for bullying. It's it, it, Nobody is. Nobody wants to see this. But honestly, since the beginning of time, there have been bullies. And the truth is, how in, how can you ever become a strong person and a strong person builds a strong society without bullies. Like, can you answer that question about like, how is it possible? No, like, you, how do you can. I mean, to, to really, I mean, to do so, to do something, Carrie, you, you actually have to, you got to seek out the bully in every situation. If you're, if you're, if you're going to be good and you're going to accomplish great greatness, you've got to seek out the bully. Like you were talking case in point, create bully situations. When you go in the weight room, put more weight on there. I would always tell guys like, Hey, if, if, if this is saying I'm doing three sets of 10 and you're getting 30 reps without it, without a struggle, like you're not lifting an, enough weight. You're not creating a bully situation. You want to create a situation, put more weight on there where it's going to force you to fail and you fail again and fail again. And this again, touch touches back to, I think chapter four and five, but that's the only way you can get bigger. You can get stronger. You can get better. You know, you don't, how are you going to be, how are you going to be the man if you go in the room and just beat up on guys every day? Right. Or that's seek right. out the weaker competition. You, you, you can't. And that's not just true in athletics. That's, that's true in life, you know? Yeah. And you know, you've, you've got to create bully situations. Like they were talking in the book, you know, to, to reference some of the book, you know, um, what general McRaven was talking about was literally swimming with the, literally swimming with the sharks. They would have to yeah. go out in the middle of the night in shark infested waters, you know, and that was one of the dangers was the sharks, right? He, he listed right. off off a multitude of things that they, they could possibly run into this breed of shark, that breed of shark, a great, 
a, a great white, a riptide, you name it. He was like, there was all these bur- bullies lurk, lurking in the water. Yes. And he, you know, and he said, it wasn't, it wasn't the fact of just making it through the swim. It was actually psychologically staring down the bullies in the water. And that's really what, 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 what life is about. What wrestling is about is seeking out and attacking bullies. And that's really what it comes down to. That's yeah. the only way you're going to be great. Right. And when you, when you, and when you actually talk about sharks, you know, we all grew up on Jaws, right? Everybody's grown up on Jaws. <laughs> but the truth is sharks typically do, are not out there and all in, in, in eating human beings, right? Uh, yes, we have shark attacks and there's, there's reasons for that, but they're, you know, they're, they, they have their, their area of where they're feeding and they know what they're looking for. And it's, it's typically a mistake if they bite someone. But when you grow up on the movie Jaws, and you've seen it your whole life and you can't see what's underneath you and you're thrown in there with with great whites. It's really what they're doing. They're teaching these guys to face their fears because it's it's highly unlikely that they will be attacked. But the, the biggest thing is the, the fear zone. But, you know, and, and again, so, you know, if you're a parent like listening to this, this is what I say. It's hard for every parent. The first time your kid comes home from school and I, I, I mean, everybody gets it's an emotional attachment. And, and they come home and, and you find out that they, you know, they got picked on or, the, or this and that. The truth is that's going to be life in general, their entire life from the boss that picks on them from, you know, the, the, the I, I, wherever it's going to be, it's going to happen from a teammate, you know, um, anything like that could happen. That is your, your parenting moment of teaching your kid to grow and be stronger because, Look, we've had wars since the Bible was written. Since the beginning of time, there's been a society that tries to bully another society. There's been a person trying to bully another person. It's a fact of life that they're out there. And that's the moment that you get stronger. And, you know, look, I always tell my my kids this. It's not whether you're going to like, and I'm not advocating, you know, fist fights here by any means but like probably every kid in their life gets into a fist fight you know whether it's at six years old or eight years old or 15 years old and i tell them it's not the fact of of winning or losing the fight it's it's the it's the fact that you you stand up for yourself you know that's what you have to do that's what you're teaching them you stand up for yourself and you may not win but by you won by standing up you know like and and if you continue to get bullied and let people walk all over you, then man, it's going to be a hard life because they don't go away. You know, we're going to you, no, you'll face and, them. And, you know what? You know, typically what we face, we're we're relating this a lot to sports and wrestling. Yeah, but you're gonna you. This is life in general, right? Like, yeah, I I, I say the same thing to my kids. Like, if you don't stand up for for your opinion and your beliefs. It's this. It's it's the same thing about allowing someone to physically push you around on a wrestling mat, right? Like, I'm not saying you want to argue to be right just to, just to be right, but if you feel so strongly in your beliefs and your motivations, and you don't stand up for it, shame on you, right? right. This is this is how this is how you get better. This is how you succeed in life by fighting for the choices that you believe are right. That yeah. you will well, w- 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 believe you will lead to greater w- whatever athletic, professional, individual success. There's there's a series of battles that you're constantly facing. You're you're facing down a battle every single day in so many different areas. And if you condition yourself that you know you don't want to fight just to, for fighting's sake, but you know when when there's principled things out there, there's going to be another person that that feels equally as strong the other way. Well, you got to stand up for yourself and you've got to be able to articulate why you believe something. And right. sh- shame on you if you don't do that. Don't come home and, and complain to me. Uh, you know, that's what I always tell my kids. Like when they say, you know, something and, you know, my, you know, I've probably over conditioned them the, the other way. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. And I, I well, don't think it's a wrong thing for our society. Be- but well, in today's, you know, like world and, and it, it, everybody's so politically correct and we know that and and um, but they don't they, they they exist. And and, it's, and and we have all this stuff of you know, it, it, like, <laughs> look, if my kid was a bully, there'd be a real problem for him at home. Right. Or her. Um, but when it comes to him, like 
it's not a, like for me, it's like, oh, you got it was a bully. What did you do about it? You know what I mean? Like, I, I think other people freak out and and, um, and for, it, it's a pairing moment. It's a teaching moment because that's how they get stronger. You go in the weight room and you lift more weight. And once it gets easy, you add more weight. You're, you literally, like we said, you bully yourself. And when they go to school or go to work, they're going to encounter these people. And that's how you grow and get become a stronger person. And, um, you know, for me, it, it'd be frustrating if, if you weren't standing up for yourself or taking a stand and being the guy when, you know, 99 people raise their hand one way to having the courage to, to step out and say, no, I, I, I disagree. And we've seen situations like that where, where people have um, disagreed and everybody said they were crazy. And then it comes out later that they were correct, you know, and they had the courage to do it. It's funny because for me as a, as a dad. I was just at the um, I was at the NHSCA duels and I was doing some recruiting and my old high school teammate was there and his son is now and is a teenager and he was wrestling. And so, you know, I was doing my recruiting and then I would go and I would go and watch his son. He would text me every time he was up and I'd go and watch him and he's still developing and he's still getting better. And uh, he literally got bullied around the mat. He got he got shoved a couple times and, and, you know, the kid was getting when they take him off out of bounds, you know, he'd hold his face in the mat and get up and stuff. And I, you know, about an hour later, you know, I, I saw him in the lobby and because um, they were going back to the hotel and and he was over there talking to his son. And I walked up and I said, hey, I said, listen, man, you might lose matches. But, I, I, you know, I said to him, I said, but part of this sport is being a man. And, and when somebody shoves your face in the mat, you better shove their face in the mat, too. That's part of the game, you know, like yeah. sometimes that's part of it. And his dad, his dad smacks him in the shoulder and goes. What did I just tell you? <laughs> you know, apparently it's Harry. <laughs> you know, we're both we both grew yes. up the same way, and and that and neither one of us was talking about him losing the match. Not one of us were frustrated that he lost that. That didn't matter to us. He the other guy was better than him. He's he was physically yeah. more mature. He was better than him. And that wasn't the part that was upsetting. But you were getting your face pushed in the mat, and you're ne- you're letting another human being, another man, hold your face down, and that's part of being a man. That's part of you know, fighting back and standing up for yourself, and, and especially in the sport of wrestling, because we know, like, it, that's part of our game: being technical, being fast, being strong, and physically overpowering and mentally dominating the other guy. You and and, and you'll say, and, and what you're what you're taught to do, right? Like, yeah. you you push his face in the mat, and he lets you do it. You keep doing it. You keep, keep doing, doing it. Into and, and yeah. You know, and we, you know, we were working out the other day and that was one of the things we were, the, the focus was, you know, the, the focus was on, on their feet and I was watching these guys work out, but you know, the rule is there's no free points. And so you don't just take them down and get off of them. It, you take them down and then you're sliding out to the side. You got your chest weight on them. And then you're putting one hand in the back of their head and the other one in the armpit. And then you're leaning with all your weight. So you're physically breaking that person down, even though a takedown, you, you're letting him out. We, there's, you cut it. You don't cut him. You, you shove his face in the mat and you make him work up. And then we always say the second takedown and the third one gets easier and easier because you're making that guy carry your body weight and yep. you're dominating him and you're bullying him. And, um, you know, so look, if you're, your parents out there, it, you're, it's an encounter. It's don't freak out. Like it's a teaching moment. This is how your child get stronger. This is how a wrestler gets stronger. This is how a coach, because you're going to go to those arenas. And, and I talked about this later, like as a coach, you need to like try to dominate every aspect of the venue in terms of fans, in terms of like, try to control the environment as much as you can. When you go to somebody else's gym, you want to try to make it your gym, you know, and, and um, get your fans involved, get them, you know, be the loudest group there. Like that's part of it because you want to have everything you can on your side to, to give your guys a little extra effort when my guys are my, – my fans are cheering louder than your fans. All that. That's part of being a bully too. Like stand up the bullies and also in our game, there's there's times you have to be one, you know, and, and it's sports, you know. I mean – Yeah, it's sports and I think there the, – yeah, and I think there's also – we've been talking about all the, the physically tangible bullish scenarios, but there's also, you know – metaphorical bullies, right? Yes. You know, we, we talk, we talk about it all the time in the company and, you know, I talked about it all the time as a coach It's like, you have to lean into discomfort. Discomfort is a bully, right? And yep. there's, there's so many things in life that are uncomfortable that really viewed through this lens, like 
that discomfort, that's just a bully. Am I going to let that, that bully impose himself? Or am I, am I going to lean into that discomfort? Because if I lean into that discomfort, typically, number one, it's the right choice. You know, and I, I, I would always tell my guys this, and I tell my kids this all the time, like, hey, in life, if there's an easy choice and the hard choice, nine times out of 10, the hard choice is the correct choice because it is uncomfortable. It is a bully, but usually that's the obstacle you got to go through to make that breakthrough and achieve something and this, achieve the success that you want to have. So that's, that, there's metaphorical bullies all around us. You have to lean into discomfort. You have to lean into those obstacles because that's how you're truly going to make breakthroughs and really create a scenario that's really fruitful and beneficial to you. And I think, you know, we're, we're talking about in wrestling and in life, how you got to stand up to physical realities, but there's also those metaphorical bullies that you, that are surrounding us all the time that we have to lean into all the time as well, that are equally right. as beneficial and equally as pertinent to this scenario. Right. Well, you know, back, you know, back in my time, it was, it was Iowa, right? It was, it was Iowa in your time as well. And, you know, what did they refer to Carver Hawkeye? The pit. And I, yeah. I, I still remember the old woman coming up to me and getting in my face. She must've been 70 years old. <laughs> you know, she was bullying me before I even got out there to wrestle. And then after I got out there to wrestle, I mean, you, it, it, like they're there. And that's, those are the moments that you grow and you should say, thank you. You know, you almost want to say thank yeah. you because you made me stronger today because of that, you know, and, and, um, and it's like a loss. Like anytime I remember get lost, like when I felt like, Hey, I should not have lost that match and here's what happened. And, and, you know, and, and it was mentally like, I'm like, this guy thinks he's better than me now. And, and that's what drives you. And I, you grow from a loss and it's like losing to a bully, right? You, you that loss is how I, I, I looked at it and, and you grow from it and, you know, you get, you get better from it. And, um, so, Hey, they exist, yeah, so, man. Yeah, they, they exist. They're, they're the realities and they're going to be, be with you for life, no matter what situation you get into. So, you know, please listen to this, what we're saying in the correct way. Do we yeah. believe bowling is the right thing to do? No, we're, we haven't no. said that anywhere along the way, but you know what we are saying? Be thankful for the bullies. If you view them in, in the proper context, be thankful for the bullies because they can teach you a lot of things. And yeah. typically the bully in the way is exactly what you need to ascend to a level of greatness that you want to achieve. It really right. is. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, this is um, unique. Un this was a unique chapter and in, in, uh, it doesn't just convey in wrestling. It, it, it's, it's out there and you got to be stronger. You got to stand up to it. You have to stand up to it and, and that's the way it is on the wrestling mat and off the wrestling mat. And, uh, but all right, Matt, well, well, a good talk, man. And we, we move on to the next chapter next week. How, we don't have much left in this book, do we? No, I think we've got like, I think, uh, three chapters left. This is yeah. flying by. All right. Well, again, if you're, you're following along, it's, uh, make your bed by Admiral McRaven. And, um, you know, we'll talk to you all again next week. This is the podcast away and, and have a good week.